How many banks have you robbed in your career? Um, I've been charged with two and been convicted, including those two of probably six to seven armed robberies. Two of them were banks. That's what I've been charged for and convicted for. So they're the only ones I've done. They're the only ones you want to talk about? Yeah, they're the, un well, they're the only ones that I have knowledge of. Almost 80% of bank robberies in Australia take place in Sydney. Get on the fucking floor, do it now, now. And, and you just give it to them in a, in a loud voice, probably a lot louder than that. And police say bank robberies are becoming more random and more violent. It was a metal door frame. And as I hit that, I lost consciousness, I fell to the floor, and I came to with him still standing over me. And he'd been kicking you? Yep. Why would you care about the victim? I mean, it's the last thing that enters your mind. You don't want to kill him. If he's going to muck you around, well, something's going to happen to him, isn't it? I mean, if you're talking about armed robbery, you're not walking in there with it just to show it around. I mean, you're not going to have it unloaded, are you? You're going to carry it, you're going to have the damn thing loaded. If someone tries to stop you, how foolish are they going to be? It is not only the bank robbers who treat the victims badly. You've just had a gun placed here or here or maybe just in someone's pocket. You're nearly collapsing, you feel like vomiting, you've wet your pants. You're feeling in a shocking, traumatised state. And someone rings up and says, how much money did they get? Like, what's that about? Tonight on Four Corners, a look at how violent criminals and cost-cutting banks treat those in the firing line. Back in the 60s and 70s, bank security was left largely to staff. Tellers packed pistols in case of an attempted robbery and were expected to protect the bank. In the olden days, all the bank tellers had their own uh, firearm, um, which came out with your cash every day. The notion was that, well, if someone pulled a gun on me, well, then I could feel just as powerful. I might be able to pull a gun on them. You know, when I robbed the Yaguna Bank, I also took the pistol from the teller's cage. Why they were issued with them, I would assume to try and stop a bank robbery. Did that work? No. No. Well, we've had some, some disastrous stories uh, in those early days, uh, circumstances where some of our members actually committed suicide using the bank's revolver. It's a chapter that banks would prefer to forget. Years ago, bank tellers had pistols under the counters. Why? I'm not aware that they did. Um, I'm just not aware that they did. The union, in fact, lobbied to stop that practice. Look, that, that may be the case, and uh, I'm not aware of any bank um, having a policy of allowing their staff to have... Uh, firearms on them. They know they had pistols. We even had firing ranges on the top of uh, certain bank head offices in Sydney. Banks may have trouble recalling past security practices, but their critics say bank staff are still too often left exposed to workplace violence. After banks withdrew the pistols and closed their firing ranges, they did invest in other devices. But this security was expensive and not introduced to all high-risk branches.
Last year, about 140 banks, including credit unions and building societies, were attacked in New South Wales. Many of these did not have the latest security. Some banks have been robbed as many as four times and staff exposed to repeated traumas. And the robbers are becoming more violent, carrying sledgehammers, baseball bats and iron bars, which they use on staff. This woman, who we'll call Pam Smith, was a senior bank employee with an unblemished 25-year career until she became the victim of a violent bank robbery. We have protected her identity because she fears reprisals. They, they just threaten, don't touch anything or we'll get you. Basically, as they came into our area, we're just trapped, couldn't go anywhere. Of the three men that came into our area, one of them um, came towards me. One of them had a gun, had iron bars. Um, one of them had a hunting knife. So it wasn't the type of thing that you could really argue with or be brave with. You just really needed to do what you were told. He stood over me and yelled at me. He was asking for the manager and looked at me and he said, you are the manager, and then demanded to go to where we kept the money. He was carrying an iron bar. Threatening you with it? Yeah. So, um, he hit me from behind and pushed me into a door frame. It was a metal door frame. And as I hit that, I lost consciousness. I fell to the floor. And I came to with him still standing over me. And he'd been kicking you? Yep. I didn't, obviously, I hadn't, didn't know that at the time, but I was in pain and I couldn't walk properly, so... And you found, what was the evidence of him being kicking you? I had boot marks in, along my back and towards my buttocks. So you, you woke up with this man standing over you? And uh, I mean, he, had, he, was, he was still there. I mean, I didn't, I was dazed, so he's, he wanted me to get up. So he basically pulled me up and threw me where, into a, a, a strong room. Um, and demanded, you know, me to get money out for him. Was he threatening uh, you? Yeah. What was he saying? He was calling me charming names. Like what? No, he called me a bitch and a slut and all sorts of things like that. What yeah. happened after that? Well, he actually started walking to, coming towards me and he, there was a yell from outside from one of his mates and obviously they had to go. So he turned around and he, he ran out. Pam Smith sustained serious back injury, including a slipped disc, concussion and severe bruising. She has trouble sitting straight for a long time, has back spasms and is on painkillers. But it's not just about the physical injury, is it? No. At the main, every time... I mean, even coming to do this today, you kind of get horrified because you think, well, the repercussions. I mean, while you're conscious and logical, you think, oh, it's all going to go away, and then you fall asleep and you have these nice dreams and you think, no, it hasn't gone away yet. Nice dreams. <laughs> Nightmares. Nightmares, yeah. Emotionally, how has it left you? I mean, limbo. I had a career, I had a job. And now I'm somewhere where I'm trying to do the right thing and get to back to where I was, and it's been very, very slow. You don't feel any sympathy for the victims of violent crimes. How do you reconcile that? Oh, look, for, for victims of violent crime, real violent crime, yes. You know, someone's been scarred, um, hurt, shot. OK. Um... But these people that, you know, what are they suffering from? Um, they'll tell you anything that they they can't go into a bank that they've worked in anymore or uh, you know, they can't go to a counter anymore and have someone come up to them because they've got this uh, some sort of phobia that, that they've created. I mean, that's absolute bullshit. I mean, they know they're going to work in a bank.